Margaret Fuller once said, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Hello everyone, today I'm here to talk about a superpower. Yes, you heard me right. A superpower that has the ability to elevate our lives to new heights. It can open doors to success, happiness, and fulfillment. Well, it is neither a fancy device nor a magical potion. However, it is far more potent, but it's often overlooked. I'm here to uncover that mystery to you. Have you ever wondered what the world's best leaders have in common? It is the way they lead. They lead with purpose. A good leader leads the people from above them, but a great leader leads the people from within them. Leading with purpose means guiding and inspiring others towards a clear and meaningful direction, driven by a strong sense of purpose and set of values. It involves aligning individuals and collective actions with a larger vision, mission, or goal that goes beyond personal or immediate gains. By that definition, true leaders can be seen all around us. They emerge in communities, politics, education, sports, and personal relationships, regardless of their position or title. Imagine for a second how much more successful you would be today if you started a company with Bill Gates as your business partner and building one of the biggest companies in the world? Imagine how much money you would have in your bank account today if Warren Buffet was teaching you how to invest in stock market. Imagine how influential you would be in making an impact in the world if Barack Obama was your personal guide, showing you how to be an effective leader with perseverance. Leaders help in manifesting our dreams and achieve success. So, are you curious to know about the superpower that helps the world's best leaders carry out purpose-driven leadership? It is through reading. Reading is a superpower that makes leading possible. And I'm here to talk about leading with purpose through the power of reading. As John F. Kennedy rightly said, leadership and learning are indispensable to each other. Avid and regular reading leads to immense success as demonstrated by world leaders such as Mahatma Gandhi, Bill Gates, Warren Buffet, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and the list goes on and on. Another great leader, Swami Vivekananda, emphasized on reading as an essential practice for leaders to develop virtuous qualities. So, what makes me so fascinated about reading? Let me share my story. My parents used to leave me at daycare while they were at work. Sometimes I used to cry and tell my mom that it's very boring at daycare and I don't want to go there. So they used to buy me lots and lots of toys and picture books to keep me engaged. My mom used to help me read the picture books every night before bed and that was like a lullaby for me. My journey of reading books began as early as I was two and a half years old, and I've been reading almost every day since and felt there is no friend as loyal as a book. I believe reading creates a mesmerizing world of success filled with happiness and joy, and I had the opportunity to read many books beyond my school syllabus of various authors such as Enid Blyton, J.K. Rowling, Jeff Kinney, Roald Dahl, Cynthia Ryland, Hank Ketchum, Sudha Murthy, Narendra Modi, Rudyat Kipling, spiritual and mythological books, and Bhagavad Gita. Reading became my passion so much 
that my mom was worried about my eyesight and physical health. But I could not resist. I mean, how could I? And now, my home has become a mini library. Yeah, books everywhere. The breakthrough of my life was when I understood the only treasure of the universe is a good book. And the only habit to be adopted is reading. My mom stopped buying books during the COVID pandemic, and I was very restless with no new books around me. Then I found the Holy Bhagavad Gita at my home. I just glimpsed through a few pages, and I was stunned. The meanings are so deep that I decided to read the Bhagavad Gita. I have memorized all the 700 shlokas of Bhagavad Gita. With the complexity, thank you, thank you. With the complexity of Sanskrit language and the intricacies of the text, I was aware that I would need to be diligent and focused. I knew I could not compromise on my schoolwork either. Yet, even as I faced the challenges of balancing my studies, my social life, and my pursuit of learning the shlokas, I found the support of my loved ones. Their unwavering belief in me gave me the strength to push forward and overcome the obstacles in my path. I would like to thank my parents, teachers, and all my well-wishers for their immense support and encouragement, which helped me in achieving the gold medal from Sri Ganapati Sachidananda Swami, thank you, Avduta Datta Pita Mysore, the Gita Gnana Jyoti title, and several other awards for my academics, handwriting, singing, shloka recitation, orator, quiz, talenties, Olympiads, etc. Reading nurtures the awareness of our consciousness. When we read, new ideas of possibilities and achievements seem to be knocking at our hearts and minds. Hence, after completing the Bhagavad Gita, I got an idea to create a record. I thought about it and was successful. Yes, I created a record in Asia Book of Records and World Book of Records London for reciting 58 shlokas of Bhagavad Gita in five minutes. Thank you. For which I've been awarded by Kiran Bedi Ma'am at Indore. And I was equally excited when I got the opportunity to meet our former Vice President, Sri Venkaya Naidu Sir and Sri Ranjit Reddy Sir, Member of Parliament, Lok Sabha, both of whom appreciated my work. The Bhagavad Gita was just the beginning of my journey into the vast world of scriptures. The more I learned, the more I hungered for knowledge. It was then I was introduced to the Vedas by one of my teachers. I have memorized the entire Narayana Upanishad from the Krishna Yajur Ved and made my name in World Book of Records London for the second time. My name is also in Unique World Records and Telangana World Records for reciting the Narayana Upanishad in two minutes, 15 seconds. I am super excited for the felicitation of my second world record, which will happen very soon. And thank you. I've written many poems and created several educational videos to share my knowledge with my friends for which I've been awarded as Child Prodigy and Youngest Podcast Orator Award. Well, why am I telling you all of this? To show you the power of reading. If I can do it, so can you. In the future, I aspire to become an astrophysicist. My dream is to work at ISRO or NASA, and I really hope I can achieve that. Well, reading has helped me develop my language and communication skills. 
and effective communication allows for expression of thoughts, building trust, conflict resolution, and active listening, which promotes synergy and fosters a sense of unity. But besides that, and besides my achievements, reading has taught me so much about life. I mean, I'm only 14 years old and I have so much more to learn. One can lose wealth, job, or any other possession, but one can never lose knowledge. Every book you read adds to this priceless treasure. Reading literature helped me develop empathy and emotional intelligence. When we read, we experience the character's happiness, sadness, anger, pain, and love. This emotional engagement expands our capacity to relate and understand different emotions, diverse thoughts, ideas, values, and beliefs in a relationship, fostering kindness, harmony, and respect to everyone. Reading taught me how to deal with failures. We must not get disheartened by our failures, but keep moving forward. Biographies and autobiographies of accomplished individuals often shed light on their failures and how they bounced back, which can be incredibly inspiring. By embracing our failures and using them as a learning experience, we can all become stronger and wiser. It is through literature, poetry, and philosophy, we encounter the timeless wisdom of thinkers and visionaries who have pondered over the meaning of life, the nature of existence, and the essence of true leadership. It is a soul-nourishing endeavor that allows us to connect with our deepest selves, others, and the world. I'm here today for a reason, a reason that goes beyond simply documenting my own journey. It is my intense longing to light a spark in all of you. So I implore you to join me in embracing the habit of reading. A call to open our minds, ignite our imaginations, and expand our horizons. Over the past few years, people have been asking me how I'm able to read so much. So now, I'll be sharing a few essential tips that can help you become a reader. Tip number one, get started, motivate yourself. The key in achieving anything is to always stop procrastinating. There is no tomorrow, and even if it is there at all, it is never gonna come. Tip number two, read for only 10 minutes. Hmm, wonder what this means? Well, it is a trick to trick your brain. You see, if you tell yourself that I'll be reading for only 10 minutes, then your brain will most likely not see this as a chore, and you will definitely read for more than 10 minutes. Tip number three, read what you like, but also try a variety. If you enjoy reading fiction, read fiction. If you enjoy nonfiction, read nonfiction. The key is to pick up the book that you think you will like and not what others are reading. Because when it comes to reading, crumbling under peer pressure is not a good idea. At the same time, there is no harm in giving other genres a try. Remember, consistency is the key. So make reading a non-negotiable part of your daily schedule. As Robin L. Sharma rightly said, the best leaders are the most dedicated learners. Read great books daily. Hope this gives you some food for thought and makes a tangible impact in your life. This is Sanvi Jamalpur, and I welcome you to dive into the ocean of knowledge known as books. And let this superpower unleash the purpose-driven leader in you. Thank you so much for listening to me and have a great day. Thank you.